attempt at Needle Talk, episode 3. I know my microphone is terrible. I will try to get a new one at some point. Right now, I, I can't get a new one. Um, I want to talk about subgenres, which is why I'm starting with this Goner game. Um, I guess I can go back and try the first jump. Let's take a look here. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Okay. Theoretically, looking. Oh, no, there goes the derwood again. Well, whatever. Uh, you just can't win. Okay, there we go. Um, so this is my attempt at a Donner style game. Um, I don't really have like a great idea of exactly what a Gunner game is. It's like many sub genres, I'm just kind of guessing and following the things I, I dig out. Um, but from what I can figure, it's like the Metal set, right? Just like you got, you know, going on here. Um, the Goner games I like. And that too, there seems to be like a decent size variance in them. Um, all are about like ingenuity or like unique ideas, I guess you could maybe say. Um, like every save or every jump has like a concept to it, M much more theoretical or I guess conceptual than a lot of other jumps are. Like a butterfly jump, I would say, is usually fairly conceptual as well, but it's also quite heavily execution-based, whereas a goner jump will involve some decent level of execution, in fact, it's usually quite high, as is the trend with, you know, precision needle games and subgenres and stuff, but it won't be, like, it'll either be the focus of the jump in that, like, doing this hard technical maneuver is the whole jump, or it'll just kind of supplement that with, like, a, like a bare-bones utility style of design. Um, I'm not 100% sure how to articulate that, but I'll try to if I can. Um, so what's like a good example of that? Let's see if I can spot like a good jump in the threshold here that has one of those things going on. Um, yeah, there's kind of one on the top left, I guess you could say. I have dev, dev mode on right now, but I'm not going to use it that much. Um, so if you see this jump over here, you are meant to just fall through the water and then jump there. And that could have been, this bottom... Uh, sideways diamond could have been anything. It could have been like a, you know, much more intimidating and, and adjacent. Usually with drops especially, I like to give you a lot of leeway, but... Is there supposed to be a save there? There totally is. I'm super glad I didn't release this because there's absolutely supposed to be a save there. What is going on? I'm looking at it right now. Where the hell is the save? Give me that save. Um, now I gotta fix that right now. Um... Kill the dude and then put the safe in there. That's ridiculous. Why is there no safe? Can you get this away from me? Yeah, it's just not there. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> it's supposed to be a save there. There we go. Okay, save there. Now we're all good. <laughs> that was weird. Um, what was I saying again? Oh yeah, so the, the bottom of this jump here is like just pure utility. That could have been anything. It could have been much more intimidating than it is. But all that it's meant to do is make you get your double jump saved. It's not meant to like be super grim in terms of what it wants you to do with the concept. This jump here is also a good example. I'll go back to the plane in a second, but uh, this jump here is just to demonstrate your mind usage, right? And so far as I am aware, you don't need that um, that second bit of oh, uh, water too over here. Because you can maneuver the, the vines in such a way that you get your jump off of them as well without falling. But the reason the, the refresh water is there, just so you can see if you can get this. Yeah, I actually I accidentally got it there as well, so I could have just done it. But uh, yeah, shout out to Air Vines. Air Vines are so cool. Um, but yeah, this just this vine's just meant to demonstrate it. jumps. Just meant to demonstrate the coolness of Air Vines and how um, you can like reload a jump in them and then do something cool with it afterwards. Yeah, what you, what you want to do, I think, there is like um, tap right again after you get off the Air Vines. 
But either way, that jump is way easier than the first jump. I maybe I should put that first. Um, yeah, it is what it is. Um, yeah, that jump's kind of just meant to be like, oh look, air mines are cool, and then just do a water grab afterwards. It's not a super hard water grab. You do want to avoid the bomb, but other than that, it's not bad. This is my first chance to show off a line blocks. Um, which are just kill blocks with the kill turned off. <laughs> I'm glad I got a chance to use them. They're in weird places, but they're a staple of the genre. I don't, I don't know why. They just are. You just see those and you're like, oh, that kills me, right? No, it's, it's for the line. Just use it for the line. In this case, it's just a... Man, I first tried that. I keep first trying that. I first tried it last time I went for a paper as well. Um, that's right. So yeah, that, that jump is just to do the... Uh, that's a classic quite a jump. And in fact, it might be the most quiddy version of the quite jump, which is just do the F jump for the height, stagger the press for the apple, uh, make sure you're dealing with the align in good fashion, which in this case is having the best align, which is just right there, 16 pixel, and then you just tap left again after you do the fall through. Um, there are scarier versions of that, like where the the spike is turned up as well, it's that mini spike usage, but I didn't want to really mess with that. There's more vine and apple stuff, also air vines again. Shout out to Renex for getting air vines working after like um, well, no, I was gonna say minor, but I was, it was a pretty decent sized contribution, I think, from Kelvar, who did the the majority of figuring out why the air vines weren't working. Um, and so far as I'm aware, it was something to do with like movement code handling like um, horizontal speed, but I don't really understand it. So just shout out to both of them for getting that working. Um, and yeah, just another application. I was not getting weird out there. I was like, is there a block there? I forgot. But no, it's just me. This is just another application of Airlines with like a cool platform thing. Um, that I didn't, like, I kind of stole from Cloud but then he says he stole, or they say they stole from somewhere else. Um, so I don't know where they got it from. Can't remember anyway. Maybe from Kale. But then Kale says, I think they got it from somewhere else. Who knows who came up with it first. It's just the double sided diamond thing, like the little re grab there. You can do it with two platforms, which is like a little bit easier. But I just thought this application was really cool, and I like the way this information came out. I was gonna say, I wish we could learn anything else right now. Well, this jump's decently trickier than the ones before it as well, too, so this maybe where the, the difficulty curve starts. I'll go back and show the first jump if, uh, if my stream actually works, otherwise I'll just leave it for now. There's like a, a small amount of finesse required to getting past the first bit, and then this, a large amount is in the second bit. I really like stage jumps, like the, you have multiple parts of the jump that you get to play with. You do the first part, and then you react to having done the first part, and do the second part. Oh! Just missed my jump. The music that's playing um, is Crazy Sunshine by The Pillows. It was originally going to be one of the music tracks to this game. Uh, then I decided the gun or things don't really make music and you can just put on your own music if you wanted to. So when you're playing this part of the game I suggest this song, but put on whatever. The only remnant of it is that the uh, warp icon is that little sunshine dude. I should have changed the outline on now that I've got it. I'm just looking for cool to do it. Uh, I decided to have a different icon for each warp, just as originally they had the songs that were themed to them as well, so. As usual, the warp icons are stolen from uh, World Ends With You, the best source of cool 28 by 28 circles. I wish they were just slightly bigger, you know? If they were 32 by 32, there's a lot more to do with them. Without them getting distorted. What do you do? This one's hard, yo. So I guess the subgenres talk is sort of like, well, first of all, what is a subgenre of the Needle Game, and what do you mean as a genre and a subgenre? I don't, I don't really want to get into like the semantic details of it, because I think that while it's an interesting part of the discussion, it's mostly just vocabulary. Um, what's more interesting to me is all the little facets of them, and like how many different ones there are, and why they seem to follow a certain amount of 
like different genres are, are okay. Let's start off. So first of all, you've got needle games, right? Which are like, don't touch the spike, which is already infinitely elaborate in some of the permutations people can make out of it. But then I guess the usual first divide that people make is uh, consistency needle versus precision needle. Although you don't see the term precision needle used like as much as you see consistency needle. Consistency needle is just like kind of what regular needle is to a certain extent, or at least to most people. Like, you know, you've got to save. It's got five, six, seven, maybe a whole screen's worth of jumps, up to like you know, 15, 20 jumps in one save. That's kind of the traditional style of what a needle screen is. And I, I think if you see this many saves in a screen, you start to go a little worry if you're like a normal player and you've never seen a screen like this before. Why, why would I need a, a save before I could jump? Can I just do jump? No, no, you cannot. <laughs> I guess maybe that facet alone is why subgenres started to emerge because people, people like and this is what I don't mean to say like <laughs> weird people like me. I'm just gonna come and say it because like I feel weird about how much I like the subgenres of me and, and how weird they all are. Maybe it's not weird. Maybe that's not the right word. Um, eccentric. And that's just, you know, a synonym for weird. Um, I don't know why I like them so much. They just, they represent something you can't get in like a, if a game just says needle and it's like a needle game or whatever, and you open it up, and it doesn't say anything else about it. It's like um, the person's name and then needle. You can get a lot of different stuff in that one package. Um, like Renex needle, for example, right? It's really traditional needle. But you might not know that going into it. Um, or like, uh, what's another good example of that? There's another person who just released like a needle pack with just their meme on it. I can't remember who they are. Um, but that again is an example of like, well, does that person's needle include gimmicks? What kind of tile set is it using? Um, you know, how long are the saves would be my next question, but for everybody these days, the save is basically just one or two a screen. And I guess maybe that's one of the reasons I like, um, needle subgenres so much. They provide like a certain amount of safety you can't really find in in normal needle games. I guess you can, like, in some other subgenres. Like, L Needle's the big one where people, it's adjacent enough that people, if you mention L Needle, will usually know enough to know that they don't like it. And that's enough for them. They're not going to play, play L Needle games, only weird people play those. Um, I mean, not weird, but again, like, very ambitious, technical people play those games. Um, which is true. You do have to have a certain amount of, like, I want to learn how to do this really weird thing. Um, as opposed to, I want to see this whole game and experience this, the flow of this movement. Because there's not a lot of flow going into like one save. Ah, uh, the pretty funny pun, you know, the flow clear discussion. Dang, I can't get the re-rep. Um, I wonder if it's bad for pacing to just stay here forever until I could just save. Dang it. <laughs> I shouldn't help forward, I need to stagger my, my uh, forward press there. Oh, I shouldn't have staggered at that time. I was low enough that I didn't need to stagger it. I'm going to concentrate really hard for a second. For several seconds. Okay, concentrating hard is not working. Back to... Not... Concentrating. Okay, I lied, I'm still concentrating. <laughs> I wish it wasn't. Yo, thank you for the raid. I have no idea if my stream is even working most of the time, because my internet is so bad. Uh, um, if anyone can even hear me, that would be great to know, because I have like the video for Twitch turned off and everything. I'm basically just going by the little colored square in the lower right hand of OBS as to whether or not my stream is even working. So that's cool. <laughs> um, I really want to refresh the page. This gives up like a little chat or whatever, but I'm scared. I don't even know if my mic is like being picked up or whatever. So. Um, I'm going to do it. I'm going to click the mode. Oh, I'm going to do this. Mute. Pause the video. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it there. 
maybe it's working, maybe it's not. I was in the process of trying to talk about needle subgenerals, and I don't know if it was picking up or if it was on or whatever. I think I was, I was trying to say that like you have to have a certain part of you that appreciates weird or niche technical concepts. Because you could see a jump like this and be like, oh, that's a neat idea. Maybe I could do something like that. But you don't then, then have to force yourself to do it. <laughs> Maybe there's not a benefit in even playing it. Maybe you just want to see the weird stuff. Um, I have a weird confession in that space, though, which I don't know if anyone else can really do. I don't look at needle screens. I don't look at any part of a needle screen unless it's in like posted in abstraction when I'm playing it. I don't look at any part of a needle screen that I am not currently attempting to play. So if I start a screen, and there's like a drop or whatever, I don't look at the bottom of the drop. Oh, why did I stagger? I don't look at the bottom of the drop. I go, okay, what's the first part of this job? Gate? Good. Let's go. And I do, and I do the gate, and then react to whatever's after that. And if, because I have such a big monitor and I play full screen, this is kind of easy to do. <laughs> and it creates some weird moments. Um, where I think maybe I... I excel in places other people wouldn't, but I also create a lot of really punishing situations for myself because of that. Because you can't treat a needle game like an avoidance. If, for example, um, there's like really complex pathing or whatever, and you have to sit and figure it out at least. I I not only hate doing that, I'm terrible at it. That's why I hate it. Like a, a quo quo style thing, I cannot figure out. Um, so rather than trying to figure it out, I will kind of just jump and hope that my jumps work. And sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. But therefore, part of my uh, part of my evaluation on a jump's quality is based on its reactivity as well, which is probably not a factor a lot of other people are putting into it, unless you have triggers or trap usage or whatever. This should be a consistent like I'm looking at that. that should be like a consistent four or five frame. I feel like you can maybe even bonk. Yeah, you can. You can totally bonk. Should I just bonk? I tried to set that up so you can bonk, but obviously I'm on the floor. I honestly don't like bonk. It makes me feel weird. Like, I just avoid it in jumps, unless they're absolutely required. Damn it, not far enough up. So what makes a goner game a goner game? Um, I had a theory about it that I posted in some reviews. Um, my first theory is that it involves at least... Well, one of the things I already said, but I think it got picked up in the recording, who knows if it hit the stream. Um, is that the jumps have to be very conceptual, especially in later Goner games. Early Goner games are kind of just brutal in a, for me, an unappealing way. And I wouldn't say brutal in the way like an arsenic like is brutal or that like Hades like is brutal, but like they'll just be kind of stupid. Like you know, what if we made you do three D planes in one save? Ha ha! I don't think that's actually a thing. Yes, let's go. Don't anybody make that a thing. Um. But yeah, so my approach to what I thought a goner game was, at least, aside from the default Kyle said, and like some line-dependent stuff, is that every jump has to have like a cool idea for you to think about. Like, oh, maybe I didn't know that. Maybe I didn't know that you could do that before. Um, so like the obvious, I guess I'm going to go back to it now. The ob most obvious example is for me, and I do not remember if a line, horizontal line affects this, so who cares, uh, is this jump. The, as soon as I learned about this, uh, this water deep plane setup thing, Independently, because it's not, I just don't, like I didn't invent it. A lot of people have done it. Somebody um, who posts on the needle making chat a lot, I can't remember who it was, I think maybe it was Cherry, but I'm not sure, um, posted like a really cool setup version of this using gravity slippers and stuff. Um, the basic setup is you just do a deep plane, but then you sink the top half into a block and put water in the front. Um, and I believe it is V, v line dependent. But then it interacts with the V string as well, so I don't know what a good range for it is. Again, I think whoever posted recently in Needle Chat probably could tell you. Um, but that being said, you can kind of just eyeball it as long as you don't hit that top block. Do I want a better? No, that one's okay. I was gonna say because I know that the main setup is bonk into it, and that's not what I. You can't do that here, unfortunately, because um, well, the V again, the V string thing, but. There's a good setup for it, right? You just kind of fall into it with like a range of like maybe a 2 to a 4 frame or something. Um, and then once you're in there, I wanted to make you do the loop. And it was really hard to go from wanting to make you do the loop to actually getting the loop in there. Originally that right half had no spikes. 
And the reason the spikes are in there now is because I realized you could, and you still probably can actually, um, do like a can't like a low cancel to to grab refresh your jump and then go back down. And it made it, it's still cool, um, but I don't think it's as cool as the loop. So I tried to make the loop like more accommodating to the shape. You've got like a weird Charlie thing down there at the bottom, um, and then just like kind of that, that double diagonal. The reason you do the double diagonal is because if you just have a single diagonal adjacent to whatever spike, it becomes a 16 pixel. I don't know how to explain that. Um, I'll try to explain that later if I can. <laughs> but basically if you don't extend open diagonals to at least two spikes, you can 16 pixel them and it makes them kind of whack. In my opinion. Oh, my goodness. Um... I don't know if I'm gonna say grinding this, but the basic idea is you do the you do the loop around. I'm just getting a lot of lag probably from streaming and recording at the same time. Oh yeah, there it goes that battery. There it goes. Where did that battery go? Out right here. Come back. I feel like if I had a, a modem, I'd just like rub it with. Um, if I had like a modem, I'd rub it with Vaseline, it would make it go faster. Come on. Like kick the side of your uh, computer to make it work again. Whatever, I'm just gonna have to go forward like I can stream because I can't see any questions anyway. And I'm not gonna read that one because I think it was in the recording, so let's move on. I don't think a line matters for this. The line might matter because I do a little setup here with the corner where you just jump and fall through. Cannot full jump. You can get really close to on every green, which I like. And then I made that so that the water was kind of like sort of necessary to go back down. It's definitely way easier. I don't think it's necessary though. In most setups like that, you can't make it completely necessary. Oh. I also just really like water interactions and default tile sets. They look cool. Let me get a line set up here. I do not know if that line is required, but I think it is. It felt very required when I did that. Um, what if I stop streaming this right here? Get around. We can make it successful. Ding, ding, ding. We're back. Maybe. Possibly. I'm just going to pause that. <sighs> and I don't have an explanation for one minute. Just I mean, it's on wireless. So it's um, once you have that aligned, there is a bonk spot. And once you have the bonk spot, you want to double jump into the water. I think this jump originally just like started as the required bonk, so I, in, the, in a situation like this, I wanted to have a bonk. And I don't really have a rhyme or reason for why jumps like this sometimes pop up. Sometimes I, I just like doing them. Because um, you remove a lot of uh, agency from the player if you require them to bonk right away. Like it, you're immediately high capped, your V-speed maxed, or very close to max. And then, yeah, you have to, like, especially in that instance, like, you're getting out of an invert type thing, so. I don't know. I thought it was neat. Um, in this one, the line box here to keep that set up for the corner. And then the next part is just the plane setup again, which again is, I think, V-string dependent, but I don't know the V-string. So I just kind of eyeball it. I don't remember the top part being that hard. It's been a while since I practiced this. So I'm looking for like a weird spike down this way. Let's go. Um, I'm pretty sure that a line is required here to not. Well, okay. So there's a. I think in this instance, this, there's a couple ways to do this jump. Um, the one that I thought of is a three frame with best line. I believe it's. And then you want to save your jump through the planes, 
Which are like fake planes. Oh. Maybe it's a two frame. It might be a two frame. A two frame I might be a lot. Ooh, yeah. Okay, it's a two frame I like. I was gonna say if it's a two frame I can be more consistent than this is. Which I can do sometimes, but not often. And again, conceptually this bottom part could have been a lot worse. But, oh, here's a good example of what I was talking about earlier. So I'll see if I can talk about it. Somehow my uh, my playlist picked a random song. I kind of want to leave this on. I'm gonna leave this on. I'm gonna leave it on. Um, terrible internet, terrible computer. What are you gonna do? Um, so here's an example of that 16 pixel thing. That I was talking about. Also, that save point depth is weird. I'm gonna change that. You like the idea of having the save point behind the block? Um, so if you see here, you've got like uh, sort of a what you would call like if you move one of these up or whatever into the side you have like sort of a diagonal. It implies a diagonal because it's got that slant to it. There's the slant on the that side and the one over here. But the sad reality is because of the kit's width, which is 11 pixels, you can just fall into this slot here and not move at all. Um, unless you extend it by two things on either side. Which is like Sometimes you can do it, sometimes you can't. I think in this instance I wanted to probably have like a, a wrap around to the underside of that. But I think I put the block here just to make the, uh, the spacing a little weaker. So I do not have a good method for this jump, just basically it's prey. I think you can one frame into the thing, but it doesn't really matter. Like, you don't need to have your double jump for the second half. You probably just, you know, do one of these. In fact, I think you can even bonk into it if you have a proper setup. I'm just going to turn. Not required, but definitely. The lag makes it difficult. Can I pause the video? Uh, so the idea here is to get under the apple and then get out of the apple. No, I'm not scared this one. This one's pretty rough. I know I have like a tendency for um, apple. Oh wait, hold on. I have walk off one. Walk off one too. Hold on. I know I have a tendency to put apples in games with line dependent with animation dependent jumps that people do not like. I do not think this is animation dependent, for one thing. However, it is pretty pernicious, I could say, maybe. Um, geez, I remember being a lot easier in testing too. Well, I'm missing like a ton of my jumps because of button degradation. Also, that bottom area setup, so you can full jump. You're supposed to full jump. You could even like cancel the, you know, but I don't think it would be spectacularly helpful. I just think it looks cool. You'll lower cancel? Hold on. Now you're gonna hit, hit the top spike. It's a hold. Dang it! Dang it. I 
guess that is technically an apple plane as well, but you're on the safer side of it as well. No! Why? Why did I hold jump? Why? I'm kind of gonna screw you. <laughs> um, I guess another thing about the screen red stuff to other Goner games is that it's not like as jam packed with stuff. Like normally a Goner game is using every space on the screen, and, and this kind of is just. You know, there's some empty space in a lot of places. Um, you know, this little water decoration, the water decoration's over here, you know, maybe somebody would use all that space for jumps and stuff. Um, I like having a little empty space in the game, especially a really difficult game. I think it's hard to, harder to do, maybe, to have that empty space there. Um, this part will probably be easy for people who are better with platforms than I am. I'm pretty bad with them. And I don't think numpad can or the numpad trick is like useful here, because like yeah. What I found the best method to be is like timing your uh, your jump with your right press. Ooh, almost had it. And I might change this to an extra as well. I have other um Subgenre examples, I guess, to go into, but like, even just talking about Bonner games is pretty difficult because they're so abstract. Um, I also had a theory that, like, damn, I'm saying the opening jump should utilize the empty space of, uh, of one jump in a certain way. Um, like, I don't know if it's like well documented or well known, I barely even know how to describe what a Toki jump is, which I think is like a it's like a plane or a corner that you do by dipping into one of the other. Like you have to dip into a plane to do the corner or vice versa. I don't remember the exact formation, but it involves using the empty space of one to do the other. I think jumps like that are basically some of the coolest jumps ever. Um, every time I say something like that, I'm like, I don't know why. I don't know why I like that. Um, I, you know, I have a bunch of dumb reasons. Like this probably should stop saying that. It's kind of redundant at this point. Unless I like have a good reason to make it so you... In this jump I like the spacing of the platforms because you have to forward press fall in a different way for this side. Like you're you have to go past the up spike as opposed to being directly over it. So I thought it was cool to like manage the different types of movement. And then yeah, the, the last grab is like the first two grabs are safe, but the third one's tricky. Hey, yeah, I did not think I was gonna get it. Um here we are at clear screen number one. Um as you beat the video game, which you did. And then it has the GG. I wouldn't have left the GG there, except it's transparent, so I thought it was cool. Um, and then for the uh, for the EX screen, I originally had music choice, choice between music and silent. Um, again, I cut that because I figured you could just put on your own music. Um, but I left the two sides because I thought it um, You can create this intro in here. These uh, <laughs> second objects are figs, <laughs> which Renex put in the engine. I think they're onions. They're called onions in the, in the one thing, figs in the other. Uh, and I just wanted a chance to use them. <laughs> I just wanted an excuse to put them in the game. They're in, um, they're in this difficulty select room for my butterfly game as well, which is not out. But I just thought they were the cooler here. They're honestly not too bad to deal with. Either. First try, let's go. Um, and yeah. Then we're into the X screen. I don't think I'm going to do a full playthrough of this because it's pretty painful. Um, funny story about the EX screen: it was originally the default screen. I made the screen first, and in fact, it was part of a string of Goner screens I made. I think um, the reason I can tell that is because every single Goner screen I made starts with this jump, or at least like a decent chunk of them start with this jump. Um, I just think it's funny. I don't know why. It's like, oh, you know, a do plane, but with fruit. Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe other people will think it's funny. Um, it's just to kind of get you into the game here. Looking at it again, I don't think it's that bad. And then I'm like going over the rest of this map. I, I again never look forward at maps. So I'm like, hmm, why was this bad again? Well, you know, you've got like a squished diagonal into that really tight vine grab. Um, what else is going on there? Oh, that's the last jump. Oh, that's not too bad. Let's see what's after this. 
That Irvine thing is super fun. Um, I remember that got edited. Yeah, I I want to say it's the second half of this that is more portable. So let's, let's take a look. Can I even do this one? Almost restricted. I want to say a line matters here, but I don't know what the good line is, so I just grabbed the one I thought it was. Yeah, that was good. That, this, oh no, Venix. Hold on. Okay, as long as I can get the last pixel, I don't care. I was worried there for a second. Do I have right align? No. What? This better not be a thing. What the hell is that? That's terrible. <laughs> I think I know why that's happening, though. That's awful. I need to fix that right now. I'm, fi I'm fixing it as we speak. Uh, okay, let's wait for a second. What the hell? I know exactly why this is happening. <laughs> no. <laughs> fix it, fix it, fix it. There you go. <laughs> I don't know why that's a default in Renex Engine. I should probably mention that. Um, and I'll explain what was going on there as well as soon as I get the game back up. Okay. Come on. There you go. Um, so the reason that happened is because the for by default, for some reason, in Renex Engine, the save uh, hitbox mask is set to precisely the save points image which creates this like space right one pixel here where if you have best align you can't touch it. Um, that's a thing in old games. That shouldn't be a thing in new games. And I always turn that off as soon as I encounter it, but I often forget, so I'll probably mention that to Linux later. It's not, a, not very handy to have that. Um, so this jump, this is more of a traditional gunner jump. I wanted to have you dip into the uh, the corner. Which I, I don't think is necessary, but it definitely makes the rest of it a lot easier in my experience. Because you can get into that corner really easily. Whereas when, like, hold, if you hold right there, you're going to give. Oh, I just did it without the corner. Well, I suck. Whatever. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to get that type of jump to work out properly. You know what? I don't mind though that I got it the corner. That just means it's easier that way for anyone else to do it. Here I wanted you to have to use your rejump to grab the vine, but again I don't think you need to. This is turning out to be easier. Maybe I, have to, I might have to switch the screens back. Oh, it's that weird um it's that weird plane thing that I encountered recently. Okay. So apparently according to I guess like I don't know what you call it, process sublimation or just like common contravance, this is basically just a, a buffed plane. Which makes sense to me. It is, it is basically a buffed plane, but I've not seen a lot of them before. I'm not, I don't know, recently I just, I've been putting a lot of them in games and they seem like kind of cool because of how difficult they are. I don't know. I've definitely not been putting in them in, in any of my, my maker maps, but for precision stuff, it's really cool. This originally was a, uh, just a quick jump into an apple. Uh, this might be hard enough to run the next time, I'm not sure. I know the next jump's not. Let me in. This is a line dependent, primarily. But the line we need is right there. I'm gonna first try, I swear. Oh, second try. I might I might switch the screen order back. <laughs> I don't know what it was going on. I, I I was like reasonably positive that this was the harder screen. But if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, you know? Also I believe that's a line dependent for this corner setup. I don't remember. Oh yeah, it's still allowed that, basically. And then you want to dip. I, you know what? This jump might be the reason the uh, this screen's in EX. This is a hard jump. You're not meant to uh, to jump back up that. You're meant to just dip. Which is why we call this very long style, because you're just like using the space. It's just the turn is so fast. And if you don't do it with the right angle, you can bump that apple every time. If I remember correctly, I did try to find a setup for this where I like two framed out of the the little pool, but I couldn't find one that was as consistent as just doing the dip. And I think this save is exclusively the reason this is in the X. So I guess that raises a couple questions. 
Should I nerf this aid being the first one? Originally this was uh, like a triple water plane or something, which is quite goner style, but in a boring way, I think. Like, yeah, do one plane in water, but then do three. That's hard, right? Um, I really have a problem with precision needles like that. Because anyone can do that, and you don't have to call it a game. Just make a maker map that says, you know, five water planes. And anybody who wants to do five water planes will just go do it there. Don't, like, don't call that a design decision. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody could do that in JTool. You could make that JTool map in five seconds and be like, ah, one water plane, why not 50? I think putting stuff like that in a game is whack. <laughs> you know, maybe necessary, but whack. Oh, I thought this was a good try. Yeah, this, this jump is brutal. And it's one of the reasons is because you can't um, full jump that corner. You have to double jump the corner. And by then you're losing so much height already. The main reason is how friggin' fast the turnaround is. I'm not skip this one just for demonstration purposes. I suck. I'm like trying the two-frame thing, but sort of not trying it. I should decide if I want to try it or not. I thought that was a good try. Okay, three more three more good tries. That was one. That was two. That wasn't it. Oh! Woohoo! Let's go. Um, yeah. That jump, EX jump. <laughs> Let's go. Um, this is just me screwing around with apple heights and stuff. This might be animation dependent, but I don't know. Um, I'm like trying to perfectly envision where the hitbox is relative to the circle, and I don't think it is. But maybe it is. I also don't think it's animation or uh, align dependent, but you know, there might be a good align for it. Oh no, never mind. Now I really might have to move this back to. <laughs> Although I remember this jump being quite hard too. The idea is like you're supposed to bump, reverse fall through it or something. And it involves a turnaround game, which is really hard. I don't end up doing it. This was one of the ones I looked at and I was like, what? This is possible? Oh, okay, maybe it's like that. I feel like you have way too much uh, speed. Can I like two frame at the bottom? Can I have one frame at the bottom? I'm quite sure the original method was meant to involve two platform maps. But that's pretty prohibitive. Like that one bit right above there. But that's like that's just a normal grab, but you're doing it from a pinched angle. And plus, you might um, just stand on it, which I think maybe is happening a lot. So. Straight on through. You're definitely in the space to grab it, you just need to grab it and not die. Oh! Okay, I'm in here. The problem with this is, uh, I was gonna say, I didn't have any testers for this game. Dang it. Um, no matter how many times I asked, nobody wanted to test a gunner game. I did have some initial testers for the first version of this, which did not have um, the previous screen. Um, but through that I was only able to determine the airvine didn't work, and I didn't know why, so I put it on the shelf. Can I friggin... Are you? I think what happened is I one framed on the second one. Is that another squished plane? I'm looking at it and I think it is. Holy cow. I was addicted to those. Cause I was just like, it's a corner? It's a it's a gate? I don't know what it is. Why is that so cool? Would you So jumps like this make me feel extra, but then everything else is like, man, that's so easy to do this stuff. I think it maybe would be good to have like two outliers in the main game, as opposed to have the out the extra screen be too easy and the main screen be too hard. This jump's pretty tricky though. Okay, I did a cool thing. Um, this one I think was to force walk off, but I don't remember. Maybe it's not. 
No, it is. Because, <laughs> yeah, otherwise you're going to have to... Uh... Well, no, I don't think... No, wait, it is. Yeah, because you actually need to jump again. Yeah, I, I think after, like, most of these... Unless the second half turns out to be really hard. And I know there's at least one free jump in there as well. I can see the free one right now. I might switch the order of these. Mm. I don't know if that's interesting to you. I don't know if this qualifies as needle talk. Who knows? This one I think you have to stagger through because you can't get the good beast speed for it. Since the decline is right there, you're good to go. I've seen a few Goner games that do this um, type of thing. I haven't seen them before I implemented this, and I've done this in a ton of places as well. It's obviously not new. I'm sure many people have done it, where you can like, get the grab of that space that you wouldn't otherwise be able to occupy. it. I think it's really neat. Hard to do when you're lightning. Cool. Nope. The second half of this jump might be more painful than I wanted it to be. Let's see. Really hard when you're lagging. <laughs> Yeah, I went too quick. That vine's just to necessitate the grab there, and I'm still not very good at these. I would like to, uh, to ask Cloud to, to give kind of a dissertation on how they do them, because I see them include vines slow down grabs a lot in their maps. I think they're really cool, but I don't know how to do them well. My only approach is, uh, this, well, you'll see it here. Um, it's like a squish diagonal, I think, because it's my understanding that based on that one screen of, um... Ooh, is it I Want a Tau? It's an Eris game, I believe it is I Want a Tau. Um, it's got a symbol, so I don't know. But I believe it's that game where, that has, um... Like a, a set up into a squish diagonal, but you can't do it max V-speed, and the water doesn't allow you to position yourself so much that you can use your V-speed enough. I guess, um, Attack 2 is possibly more famous for that, for having the... Into the infamous squish diagonal that you meant to do at speed that you can't do. Um, so a bummer there. I wonder how that got in. I feel like the, the level of rigor there was high enough that that shouldn't have gotten in. What do I know? See, this is another save where I'm like, is this hard enough to be an extra? I think just the first half is not bad, but the second half makes it quite difficult to do. Also, I'm unsure how much a line matters for that thing, because you're 11 pixels, right? And I don't know how much space that is. Is it 16? Is it 8? Am I submersing my entire body just a bit? Yeah, I need to make that one more. If anyone wants to explain how either of these things work, that'd be great. Right. Oh wait, yeah, I forgot that there was a second song I had for this game that I didn't put on. Um, I guess I can try to find it. That song is... is... Never heard it crash. No, it's surprisingly stable. Um, this is Blues Drive Monster, also about the pillows. I sure like the pillows. I want to make a whole game based on their music someday. But I'm not good enough to do that yet. Obviously a big fan of uh, Finicudi. Um, I have not watched the sequels, I've heard they're questionable. I actually have a... <laughs> this is totally off topic, I don't know if it's... Right, I'm just going to do it, and then if people hate it, I'll never do it again. Um, as an off-top, quick off-topic rant. I feel like... The concept of awkward, masculine, pubescent energy is one of the core themes of Fudikuri, and changing it to a female protagonist is so interesting to me, like the, the premise of that inversion is so interesting to me, that I was scared to watch it because I knew they weren't going to get it right. I don't think it's impossible to get that premise right, I think it's probably easier than you might think to get that premise right, just because of how cool the inversion of that is, like, it doesn't necessarily mean lesbians or whatever, you know, like, that, again, is the awkward, 
I actually don't know how that's addressed. Like, how is the awkward pubescent romance addressed retrospectively? Like, the, the same way that Evangelion's is addressed? Because people have been memeing on that for days. I am dropping YouTube way too early. Um, but anyway, I like the whole horn growing from the head thing. Come on. <laughs> I wanted to see that with the female protagonist so badly, and then I was like, no, this is going to be terrible. We're going to screw this up. And I haven't watched it, and I have almost certification that that's true. Um, if I can, I want to make an avoidance. So. Alright, alright, alright. I'm going to keep trying to do this jump. I don't think the first part's the hardest part, I think the second part is. I can save me. Mm -hmm. I could nerf this part of the jump. Although then there's like, can I get all the way over there with the... I'm pretty sure I tested this. Hold on. Yeah, no chance. <laughs> you need to be like, past the middle before you do the second jump. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know if... Actually, I think a lot of other people might do do this. You, like, you have a song you really love, and you like start picturing stuff in your head that goes along to it. Like a little music video, or like a, a, like a cutscene, like a video game or something. You just make up little images or stories in your head that go along with it. I don't know how many other people do that. I do that all the time. Um, I, I think it's a really good source of inspiration for needle games, for one thing. But if I was going to be inspired by this song, I would make some crazy ones. Hitting, uh, hitting a giant apple back on the top of the world. That one looks Ah, I went too late. Although you could theoretically re-grab there, I guess. I don't know if I'm suave enough to do that. You start to see, I think this probably is how a lot of avoidance, get, avoidance like, games get made. Like, you see the attack in your head and then you kind of make it emulative to what part of the song is that you like. Um, probably every good avoidance is that to a certain degree. So that's the middle player who's going to use avoidance. Put some avoidance adjacent genres, alright. Get a rhythm game or two back in my video. I can't decide if I would like this more or less with the first part nerfed. Like, I... Because the thing is, conceptually, there's two things going on, I guess. And one of them is, like, more known, at least to me, anyway. It's, like, a conventional usage of the line, meant to use it to slow your fall in a situation in which your reason is too high. But the other one's, like, well, it is just sort of a water grab, you know, a tough water grab. But it's also, like, did you, you get between there? Did you? But then I, once again, I've seen that in other Donner games. I'm digging too low, so I'm getting decent looking to see the first time. One of the things I actually really like about subgenres like this are the, the consistency evolutions you get in small pieces. And you probably see way more evidently in a consistency of this game, but I guess the way you experience them is different. Especially with butterfly games, I find that. You have to tackle the jump in the stages of competency. Unless you just get really lucky. Okay. Yeah, you have to like start handling your fall pretty much as soon as you're out of here. This jump again is saying extra as well for 
both parts have been involved, I think. Well, I wish I had a tester. Because I don't think I can, like, I'm not very good at modularly designing stages, but, like, I take one jump from this one screen and move it to another screen. I kind of have to, like, stay where they are for the most part. So if I was to rebalance a screen based around really hard jumps, I'd have to buff everything else or nerf those jumps. And neither of those are comfortable in mind. I want to talk about butterfly needle beams as well, too. It's kind of hard with a visual example. I don't have one off the top of my head. Um, maybe I can find one. Let me give this jump a little bit more time. Why am I bothering to clear a jump I already cleared? Well, I guess I'm gonna like experientially understand how I can this. I don't just want to understand an isolation of like an MG tool, but that's fine. It's in the game now. Can I clear it? That's important. But I do like playing my games to a certain extent. Mostly because they kind of represent stuff I don't find in other games. Not like the ideas are super unique, but like the execution of them is maybe a little bit weirder or more different. Um, more conceptual maybe. And also that there are more more sticks. Dang it! I wonder how the line is oriented. I was originally worried about the line that the framework would turn out to be okay. But... I'm, I was gonna say, with, is, like, is there an angle I can get this without a stagger? Is that a two frame or one frame? Here's a two frame. They're there for probably one frame as well, one one frame. Is that the one frame? Wait, have I just done one framing? Apparently, okay. Natural 1S. Give him another hug. And if there's like a, I think I tried to find like a cool bunk setup for this and there wasn't one. Because there's, I think, like a corner that I will. But I, I think you can, if with like a certain. Um, a certain orientation, which I don't know what it is. Nah, that's a two-frame, come on. I know it's a one frame. Yeah. Alright, I think I gotta go past this jump. Because um, I want to show off the next one. It's, it's weird, too, because this one's like supposedly free. I just wanted to show off like a bunch of different concepts in one jump. Um, you got three things going on here. You have the Apple Walk, which is not new. Um, and then you have the Apple Walk into Walk Off Line, which I think is new. Cloud said they like that, and I feel like I came up with that. And then you have the Bonk uh, Shaped Lane, which is mostly free. So, again, you've seen that before, especially also in this map. You get all three at once. Ooh. Might be the only one. Hey! Again, that's basically free. It shows us some cool concepts, I think. Uh, here I wanted the required walk-off into the dip. You can theoretically jump there, I think, but it's not necessary. Also, a weird squish plane thing again, which I like. Back. If anything, I think I maybe moved this extra just because I was less confident in it. It feels like a lot, um... It feels like a lot more obtuse than the other screen, where, like, what you're meant to do is a lot more obvious. But, I don't know, it's not necessarily that much harder. It's like a bunch of really hard stuff interested with like a bunch of sort of free stuff. And I'm not sure how I feel about that ultimately. Maybe I should jump out of there, but then the apples for me. I remember correctly, the latch into the doozy, too. Maybe the, another reason. Ah! <laughs> Reacted late to my missing it. Got 
more consistent setup for the beam. Ooh, is that it? That'd be sick if that were it. What? Oh my gosh, is that intended? When I made it? That's sick! I don't think that's intended, um, and it probably doesn't add anything. I just I found a couple jumps like this recently where like doing a little bit of extra movement before the jump sometimes helps to set up for the rest of the jump. So I'm like kind of falling off and then wall hugging. I don't know. It felt like it was cool. It was working for a little bit. Maybe not so much now. Dang it, it just worked again. It just involves more uh, nuanced movement, I guess. I really think you can just do it with the, the fall off the room. It's probably safer. Full jump up, maybe. Ooh, I bet that's the way. Yeah, I think maybe overall, deservedly, this is an EX, but like, I don't know. Also, I'm pretty sure this was for this one. Nope. There it is. The basic idea is you don't you want to like grab the space in between the wall and or in between the vine and the spike before you have to start hugging the right for the vine. It's really tough. before, but, yeah. I can prove it. I have a file saved there. Um, I'm gonna try to release this game uh, privately-ish today. Normally I would post the release in the IWC, but I'm gonna try to post it on my Patreon, which is a thing now. Um, and then as soon as, you know, upload it to the wiki. And as soon as it goes public, I'm Alfred. I'll make that post public as well. Um, I was also gonna upload some JTool maps. But I feel like without uh, audience questions, it's going to be a sus podcast. And without my streaming working properly, I can't have interactive questions, so I'm not really sure what to do. Um, oh, hey, I actually have viewers. Um, hey, Leveling, or I, mean, I wasn't expecting anyone to show up because I have no idea if my audio is working, I have no idea if my video is working, I have no idea when my stream is going to be functioning or not. Um, but thanks for popping by. It's always nice to see you. One of my favorite viewers to have. Um, and yeah, I'm just not sure if I'm gonna bring this out. Uh, I don't. If I remember correctly, I think I had the, uh, the water at the top not being necessary, and I kind of bust some stuff to make it more necessary. Yeah, but my button for this just sucks because you want to have like a relatively frame tight re jump, and the release to the press is really bad. Recently, another button on my controller stopped working, so I'm down to what, like half a button basically at this point. You can't have half a button or something. Wait, what? A, a button is only a button. You can't say it's just a half. 
Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Forget that. I'll just show the EX screen and then I'm probably done with things. Um, yeah! I use, you two have cleared the game in the EX mode. Um, I'll put the star particles here because I found that you could put them on any screen and I thought it was really funny. I kind of want to put them on more screens in the future. <laughs> now that actually makes... Huh. I wonder if I can steal or appropriate the protocol system <laughs> to make visual effects. That would be a good solution in the future. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure if this will get released or not because there's a lot of technical issues in the middle and uh, my recording quality, etc, 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 etc. But thanks for anybody who did tune in, and I'll try to do another one of these if my internet ever decides to work properly again.